Hey guys, Feeding Frenzy coming to you from inside the aquaponics greenhouse here. Um, sorry I haven't made a video in a while guys. Uh, I've just been super busy with life and uh, just all of the little homesteading projects. Um, I thought I, this would be an excellent time to show you guys where we're at uh, at this point, you know, because we're always uh, going to add on and make the system better and uh, just constantly upgrade it any way I can. Um, so let's let's talk about something, guys. Since I haven't made a video in a while, you know how I like to do things. I'm going to try to give you about a 10-minute video uh, just on all the uh, information that I've gotten um, from my experiments and uh, where I'm at, okay? So well, we had a, a serious gray fungus issue, and what I noticed was is that when it gets colder, inside uh, or outside uh, like going into the winter or coming out of the winter you know in springtime early spring <clears throat> you've got the perfect conditions for gray mold is what I've come to learn or gray fungus um, and uh, it can wreak havoc on your on your stuff guys so you've got to figure out a way to drop your humidity down um, when the temperatures are cooler and also with aquaponics um, we had all the catfish die. Uh, I, I believe they were already diseased, but uh, what happened was I didn't create the proper home for them right away. I came across them one morning and I jumped on them and I, uh, I just got ahead of myself and I, I, I rushed them into the system. <clears throat> Comes to find out uh, they had a case of ick and it wreaked havoc uh, for my other fish, which is why I'm glad I actually segregate my system. Uh, it actually helped out a lot, but I, I, I lost one or two goldfish, and then that's when I started really understanding what was happening. I've never had a fish problem like that, uh, but come to find out, it was called ick. And uh, again, guys, cold temperatures are going to be uh, your problem uh, for your aquaponics greenhouse if you're trying to go full season with it. So, um, and I'm going to make some more videos uh, as we go into this coming winter of what to do. I think I've got a good handle on that now, but that's that's to jump start you from October uh, to you know first of March until now that's kind of been the issue guys is uh, trying to kill off that gray mold and I want to show you guys a product um, that I use it's a it's a great product it's called Actinovate and uh, I hope you guys can see that it's an awesome product I really do like that product very much uh, also uh, guys I wanted to mention something about uh, some um, uh, sprays for bugs if you're outside this is a product I use called green cleaner a little bit goes a very long way and uh, it's just really good stuff very very good for your plants as well um, and I also wanted to show you guys this this stuff right here um, it was uh, an excellent thing for my aquaponic system however it does kill some of the good bacteria it doesn't kill all of it um, and that's where I say the bigger your system you have and the more hydrotin you have and the more plumbing and just the more surface area for that bacteria to live, uh, the better off you're going to be. So uh, my system, um, this was actually the perfect amount for my system and it was so bad. Like I said guys, I lost all of those fish um, and a couple of goldfish, but all of the 100 uh, catfish. But I'm going to show you guys uh, something pretty cool here in just a minute. Uh, but this was an excellent product. So, uh, yeah, your system's going to take a hit on some bacteria, uh, but it can recover, guys. I'm going to tell you something, guys. Every year, year in and year out, that I'm messing with these aquaponic systems, guys, these things are absolutely resilient, okay? Um, they are hard to destroy, okay? Life is powerful, guys. It finds a way to figure things out and adapt. And uh, it, I've made uh, so many mistakes and just had um, some, some interesting things happen in here. And guys, these systems, they can take a punch. They can take a big blow and uh, they will fight back. Uh, but we, we have to know exactly what to do and the timing of everything. So I'm tr really trying to cram all of this cold, uh, wet. It's a cold, wet environment uh, that, that, I, that I had to face. And I'd never really thought of cold, wet being a problem but guys definitely it's definitely a problem okay if you don't have proper ventilation um, and, and uh, 
just taking care of your humidity levels really in the cold it's worse in the cold than it is uh, in the hot guys um, so just just get ready for that okay uh, but anyway let's let's go over some things guys I'm gonna grab my fish feed and you guys are just gonna have to walk around with me here sorry about this you know I'm not the most tech savvy guy in the world um, so you'll have to forgive me on these horrible camera shots but I'm gonna try to show you guys feeding my fish I haven't been, really been able to show you my fish enough hopefully they'll come up yeah there's there's the tilapia I got three pretty strong ones in there uh, you can tell old old big daddy um, they're kind of hungry the water's probably about 72 degrees I would imagine um, so they're not too hungry it's but there they are and they were the cold ones guys these guys survived the horrendous cold water I mean they really did um, we had a brutal winter and uh, they survived so I would really like to try to breed them but they've outgrown all the regular uh, size fish that you can purchase so anyway that's where we're at with the tilapia uh, I, I think tilapia are not really worth it where I live now if I was uh, in Florida I'd be all over the tilapia in a heartbeat uh, but where I live, it's just, uh, you're, unless you're just trying to grow them for a season and get them fattened up so you can harvest them, uh, they're a nightmare in the winter, guys. I'll tell you, an absolute nightmare. Unless you're going to spend all that money or resource on uh, heating their water, they're an absolute nightmare, uh, in my opinion. Um, but again, I try to be economical. I don't want to blast uh, a heat um apparatus you know sucking down energy and money and electricity so anyway uh there's there they are now here's here's the new additions guys uh we had the 100 catfish in here i now have 25 catfish i actually have three albino catfish and 50 uh perch or brim look man they'll jump out of the water for these stuff for these things guys so i, I give them a couple little bursts of food here and guys, these, these things can devour some food now. Uh, they're pretty darn fast. And then the catfish are at the bottom. And we shouldn't have any uh, predator issues. Uh, the brim are actually bigger than the catfish. I really hope you guys can see them. Um, got some turbulent water in there. And guys, I got to tell you, uh, just on a side note, I'm going to give them one more little dishing here. Um guys the faster you can turn your water in your system i really do think that that's a big deal um versus a slower um way to do it i don't know that's just me now granted i'm using a bigger pump so it's more electricity <clears throat> but uh it's really worth it i think to turn your water over faster uh here's all the goldfish guys i'm gonna give them a couple drops of food i hope you guys can see them i really just haven't been able to uh, show them very much but I wanted to slow down this morning I had the time to slow down and um, they don't they don't seem too hungry here the water's a little bit chilly they, they seem happy enough um, but yeah guys uh, I give I give a lot of my uh, system credit to the goldfish and uh, they're they just they are awesome poop machines man and the way that their gut works it doesn't really break anything down uh, so the bacteria really gets to thrive on that um, here's here's the last few you might not be able to see these ones so well I sure do love these goldfish I hope you guys can see him. <clears throat> okay, so that's pretty much it on the feeding, guys. Um, let me let me put my food back up here. And uh, okay, so let's go over the plants. They've really exploded here in the last three weeks, guys. Uh, we've got some okra coming in. You guys know my channel by now. I love aquaponics okra. Uh, it, it just does really really well in here um, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side. I want to see uh, how well they grow side-by-side -side like that this this bed is really just impressive uh, how I have this one set up uh, we've got uh, some banana wax peppers coming in um, 
We've also, we've got some new tomatoes in the back. They're doing very nice. Um, again, guys, I want to show you the remnants of the gray mold, okay? This is the remnants of it. It's, I've sprayed enough actinovate and it warmed up enough. And um, this is the last bit of what it looks like, guys. You could mistake it for a calcium deficiency or uh, something like that. And that's why it goes unnoticed is you think it's a deficiency, guys. It's not. So uh, get ready for that stuff. If you're in a colder climate, just get ready. But uh, that actinovate, guys, it has really done a nice job on healing this plant. And uh, there's a lot of little peppers coming in. Um, lots of jalapenos. So I'm very, very happy with that product, it's Actinovate. Uh, here's a, this is actually a bell pepper. You guys know how much I love bell peppers. I actually started this one in the dirt, washed off the dirt, uh, stuck it in the system. Uh, here's what's really interesting. If you guys go back and watch the beginning of my channel, you will see uh, this um, Roma um, has produced well over 200 tomatoes. I just trimmed it back yesterday. You can see all the new tomatoes and I've probably, uh, like I said, it's been over 200. Uh, I've probably already harvested about 80 this year, um, maybe more. Uh, but you can see there's plenty more. You can see all the new growth. I mean, look at the size of these leaves. It's unbelievable. Um, I just, I can't, but I didn't know a tomato could do this, guys. And you can't do this in dirt, y'all. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, or soil, you cannot do this. There's no way you could keep up uh, one single plant this long, this well. Uh, aquaponics is the solution to your food problems. Um, and then, obviously, a, a solar source of electricity is, is absolutely superb. Uh, guys, I just, I, look at the root system on this thing, guys. Look at it, it's like a bonsai tomato or something. Um, you can imagine how elaborate that root system really is. I hope you guys can see it. Um, it's just unbelievable what this thing is doing. But anyway, here's the setup. Um, it's just a standpipe, guys, with about three inches of hydroton above it. Yeah, it's, it costs about $300 to fill this thing. Uh, maybe $250 to fill this thing entirely, so... Um, but it's, it's, it's been working out great. I like it. I'm going to try to wrap this video up soon. Look at all these tomatoes, guys. All these little cherry tomatoes. These things are doing great. I mean, you can see them. Um, they're doing fantastic. We've got uh, some cucumbers coming in. More tomatoes. Another pepper. Another tomato. Uh, some type of bean. I think it's a black bean. And uh, here is the... Uh, spearmint that I've actually I'm getting ready to chop it in half um, a new pepper and this is the oldest pepper here we've got a praying mantis somewhere hopefully I can get a picture of him he's right there I hope you guys can see him he just he just kind of stared at you I love praying mantis and I, I'll tell you guys if you've got a greenhouse it's like a beacon for these praying mantis they just come right out and uh, seek out your greenhouse and they'll just come and show up if you live in the right environment. Um, I took this transplant, this, this um, spearmint, and just stuck it down in the uh, raft bed and it has absolutely exploded. Uh, so I know it started to take root. Uh, the cucumber is taking off like crazy. Uh, they just love the hot. They, they, it can't be hot enough for, for a darn cucumber, I'll tell you that. Um, trying to wrap this video up here guys another tomato that has just absolutely exploded guys this raft system is amazing um, you can stick anything in here we've got more okra I, I don't know if you guys can see it but there's okra asparagus uh, more okra uh, we've got green beans in the back we've got uh, some other type of bean uh, and you can see all the multiple flowers so guys, that's pretty much it. I'm I gotta wrap this video up. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I know I skip over things, but that's because I can't make a video all the time. So I try to cram it into one video for you and keep it simple. Uh, it takes forever to upload these things. So uh, I, I just wanna say guys, thank you so much for sticking in there with me. And uh, I appreciate your comments and your subscriptions. It really does mean a lot to me. And I hope you guys are learning. I hope I'm keeping you motivated and being real with you. 
and not boring you to death with things. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I skipped over and you need to know more about, just, just message me, okay? Hey, uh, thanks again. You guys uh, keep, keep building your systems, keep feeding your fish, keep enhancing your lives, and I'll see you on the next video.